and we didn't have enough prevention. Intervention is your officers. We have a vacancy that's just crazy. It's just crazy for this moment. So our, our vacancy is at just a sky high in police department. Then the second part, we don't have no intervention. I mean, we don't have no prevention. What's preventing crime here? We don't have no, this no we're displacing people, so we're, we're getting rid of populations that people would assume are dangerous, but we're not, we're not doing nothing for people. Welcome to Community Spotlight, brought to you by Broco TV Productions and hosted by The Bros. Join us on this dynamic journey as we shine a spotlight on local agents who are making a profound difference in their communities. These remarkable individuals bring creativity, wellness, and purpose to the forefront as they tackle challenges, nurture their families, and celebrate successes. In each episode, we explore their unique stories and initiatives, offering an inspiring glimpse into the world of community transformation. Get ready to be inspired by those who are leaving an undeniable mark on their neighborhoods. Dr. Ruth, what's good, sir? Yeah, it's a pleasure. Always. Another one. Another always opportunity to sit down, man. Always a pleasure, brother. We want to keep this one real light, brother. We're going to start with either or questions. Okay. You ready? Okay. All right. Train travel or plane travel? I have to go with train because I, I enjoy... So I have, a, I have a system by which I start and live through and then end my Okay. Day. And that structure is normally around journaling, taking notes. Mm -hmm. There's a process. Mm -hmm. In a train, you have a plug, <laughs> you true. have your laptop. It's true. Um, you can, you almost forget that you're traveling. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I'm a reader, I'm a studier. If I could do that while traveling and I'm not the one driving, yeah. sign me up all day. <laughs> sign me up all day. Anyway. You with it? Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. I can dig that. Art museum or science museum? Oh, man. I envy, my brother's an artist. Mm -hmm. And I like how somebody can take a blank canvas and make something yeah. amazing. Yeah. I lived in academia, mm -hmm. and normally there's a linear structure by which you build your argument, your case, and your final conclusion. Mm -hmm. And it's almost prescripted, you know? <laughs> so I'm normally not on a blank canvas. Mm -hmm. And so I envy the blank, the blank canvas I artistry. And so I, I, I would probably choose art. Art museum, yeah. Mm -hmm. I could dig that. Okay. Cooking class or pottery class? Now, now this, is, this, is, this is personal, man. I would love to be a chef. Mm. That, that, if, like, if I was to have another life, man, okay. I would that was my chore. So I'm one of six, and you, yeah. you, sh you just yeah. broke down the house. Yep. So my chore was cooking. Okay. So if I could, if I could go in another life, um, if I wasn't reading, I'd be cooking. I saw the excitement about that. Oh, man, yeah, I, 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 I did. I, I would be there, man. Okay. <laughs> Vintage clothing or modern fashion? Uh, so I, I, have, I have changed my view on this one. Mm -hmm. My brother started a vintage shop mm -hmm. for high-end clothing. Okay. And it ended up becoming a trend, not because of him, but it ended up becoming a trend in our country. Right. So now you see these, these sort of reused shops, but you're, you're buying Gucci and you're buying, That's you right. know. So um, to me, um, I think that gap has closed in between the two, but I would still um, lean towards sort of that, what has been used and yeah, worn, yeah, sort of bringing yeah. that back to life. I like that. Yeah, and, yeah. as a community-minded person, I can see that too, like really letting nothing go to waste. That's right. right. Oh, that's really, a good way to put it. Really getting all the miles out of that rubber, right? Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, my, my, my brother once told me that the clothing industry can put some dangerous weight on the environment. Mm. The clothes that are now made very cheaply, your H&M's, yeah. I don't want to call out H&M, but like, right. hey, this is what it is, right. Yeah. Made. People now wear them and throw them away, wear them mm. and throw them away, wear them and throw So now we're having waste clothes waste. Yeah. Um, wow. that are not being used. So there's a, there's a, there's a danger on that cliff. Mm -hmm that I wouldn't have thought of. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thrift shops are, are, are helping to yeah. thwart that, I yes. guess you could say. Yes. Right? Just checking on it. Boom, good to go. Ah, jazz club or <laughs> blues bar? Man, I'm a big, I'm a big jazz player. I like, um, I like Robert Glasper. Okay. I, I'm, I'm a big Robert Glasper. I also like, um, um, uh, what's my boy? Um, uh, Keon Harrell, mm -hmm. the, the, trumpet player. Um, one of my favorite is Kristen Scott. Okay. Chris, if you haven't heard Kristen Scott, he played okay. in, in, in Durham um, at UNC's campus. He's amazing. You like he blues. infuses New Orleans, 
Again, he made his own trumpet. Really? So it's really good. He has a unique sound. Mm. But Christian Scott, all of these are sort of neon, neon soul, mm -hmm. neo soul, mm -hmm. touch jazz, touch okay. hip hop. This is sort of that jazz I like to like enjoy. I love it. I love it. All right. Cat Williams or Kevin Hart? <laughs> um, I got to say Cat Williams because he's a truth teller. Mm -hmm. Even though Kevin Hart tells the truth about his life, mm -hmm. Cat Williams is telling everybody's truth. So yeah. he, just, he, yeah. just, he, he ain't like, going to wait neither. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, dessert, first mm. or last? I have to say last. Um, mm. I, I can't wait to dessert. So it helps <laughs> me get through the middle. <laughs> so I would say last. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, Apple or Android? Mm. Um, I'm an Android for life. Uh, oh. Yeah, I sit against the grain. Um, <laughs> I'm the one that mess up everybody's text message. Yeah, you got the green. You're the green guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> DC or Marvel? Mm, I'm gonna have to go with Marvel. Mm. Do you have a favorite? Um, I like how they have moved their movie series throughout time. Mm. Um, versus DC. I think they did a good job at telling stories. Yeah. And I just love how they weaved in all these dynamic stories mm -hmm. into one long narrative. So they hooked me in. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said that before. Yeah. When I was growing up, Superman was the... Superman yeah, was right. Like, That's all we had. Was, no, Batman, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, there was no... But, but yeah. I think Marvel has really told a long, wonderful, beautiful story mm -hmm. that I think everybody can find themselves in. I can dig that. Netflix or Hulu? I watch a lot of sports. Mm -hmm. I just wish Hulu was cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say Netflix because I'm a documentary person. Yeah, yeah I can yeah, take yeah. that. Okay. Oh, man. Cardio or weight training? Um, I have, I've been with uh, a trainer for the past four years. His name is Reggie Barnes. He's yeah. a track star at NC State. Okay. He has did a combination of both. So I have an appreciation for both. Mm. And I didn't know how much I needed to take care of my body yeah. until I had him. And he does a combination of both. So I have an appreciation for both. I can't yeah. really say one. Yeah, it's necessary, right? Yes. Yeah, I can yes. dig that. I can dig that. Last but not least, breakfast for dinner or dinner for breakfast? I am a big breakfast. I'm a grits person, man. Okay. <laughs> I love it. If I can get grits and turkey bacon, I'll eat that for dinner. Salt everybody. and butter or are you the sugar guy? I'm a sugar man. You sugar I'll, guy? I'll take the butter. I'll take the butter. I'll take <laughs> I can dig it. I can dig it. I appreciate you. 21 questions with Dr. Terrence Ruth. Now, sir, I know that you are an avid reader. Mm -hmm. I know that to be true. Um, I'm curious, right now, what are you currently reading? Share that with our listeners and why. Yeah, so I'm, 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 I'm trying to align my leadership philosophy. Mm. So um, this time I'm not in books. I'm actually in academic articles. Okay. I've been trying to understand Ella Baker's leadership philosophy. Now, Ella wasn't a writer like that. She mm -hmm. didn't write a book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have to go to scholars that study Ella. Okay. We still have people who are alive that work with her. Like our attorney Al McShirley, he wrote a manuscript out in, uh, out in uh, Southern Pines. Okay. Al, Al McShirley, I met at the NAACP, he actually wrote the story wow. uh, of Ella Baker. He worked with her, he visited her late in her life. Um, she had this framework around leadership that I think was really healthy. Mm. It was leadership that shared power, okay. shared decisions, but had a direction and a vision. Mm. It wasn't about her being on the billboard, but it was about the billboard taking us somewhere yeah. with everyone included. She said, um, powerful people do not need a powerful leader. Mm. Now, it takes a good leadership framework with strong self-awareness right. for a leader to embrace that to where they're not the strongest person in the room. Mm -hmm. Their mm -hmm. leadership creates a room of strong people. Right. Not every leader will sign up for that. Mm -hmm. They will want to be the hot cold and Arnold Schwarzenegger of the room mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and lead a room where they can dominate. Right. Ella never led from up front. Mm. And her legacy is still living today. Right. We still have the divinity school mm -hmm. who have ministers who sat under her. Yeah. We have, <laughs> literally, we have uh, organizing organizations named after That's her. That's right. So Ella, to me, I think she touched a leadership model mm -hmm. 
that I think we need today. We've seen some, we've seen some models, some leadership models I think is eroding our democracy. Yeah. And I think a Ella framework will bring some nutrients back. And we'll talk more about that too, because I can see where those align with those principles that uh, can add value to a city. Yes. You know, so yes. look forward to talking a little bit more about how that mindset and that framework can continue to add value to the city of Raleigh. I want to talk a little bit more about childhood, man. Talk to me a little bit about young Terrence. You know, yeah. what was young Terrence like? Uh, describe what that looked like, the household. And then the second part is, do you see young Terrence and young Miles? Mm. And if so, what does that look like? That's really good. Uh, so, so for me, I was one of six and I was in the middle. But for a good part of my life, man, I was silent. Yeah. I didn't say a thing. I was, I was really silent. And then one day we're sitting at, um, we used to get used cars all the time. So okay. we sit at a used car dealership. And I just, little Terrence is swinging his legs on the bench. My older sister, who's the oldest out of all of us, mm -hmm. she's sitting next to me and I just started talking her hair off. And she said, man, you're talking a lot. Not in a negative <laughs> way, but it was just like a surprise. Like, yeah. like what happened to you? Right. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then I shut back up. Mm. I was like, oh, and I, I shut back up. And she said, no, 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 it's good. You know, mm. like, keep. You know, keep. Yeah. And it was from there that I began to find my voice. Mm -hmm. I began to find my voice. Mm -hmm. First, it was through a legacy of sort of the black church. Mm -hmm. So we used to have to engage in spiritual dialogue right. from the pulpit. Right. And my mom used to always say, be, uh, be, you should always be ready yeah, in season. Ready. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> be ready. So she would force you to get up That's and right. share. <laughs> say that scripture. Yeah, she That's right. would share. Uh, so it was, it was through that spiritual, that spiritual legacy. And mm -hmm. I grew up in the black church legacy. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been in that structure my whole life. Yeah. My mom is still um, an evangelist. She's still leading. She still has that framework. So my sort of outward journey to saying hello to the world came through that lane. Mm -hmm. And my story began to uh, really be attracted to learning. Mm -hmm. And that came because I had an older brother who was a mentor. Um, okay. Corey Roof, he's in Atlanta. He would be studying and open up books and mm -hmm. underlining words. But this was all in the black church tradition. This was all commentaries and... So my first time seeing somebody really dive deep into learning right. was in a commentary, was in a, was in a biblical text and commentary. That's when I began to see the value of learning and reading. Mm -hmm. I said, as a first human being, I seen study. Mm -hmm. So I said, man, I'm going to just open up my book. I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Troy, I was just opening up and highlighting. Right. <laughs> following suit. <laughs> yeah. up, highlighting. But that, that started me down a journey in which that's my life now. That's, yeah. I've, I open up, I study, I write. So when you hear me speak, I've sat on that for some time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't just... Mm -hmm. I've called around to mm -hmm. some elders to mm -hmm. get their opinions. Done your research. I've indeed. watched yeah. its documentary. So if you hear me speak, I don't care if it's policy. I don't care if it's how to see my son Miles. I don't mm -hmm. care what it is. I've sat on that for some time. Yeah. Now my son Miles, he's a good combination between me and his mom. Mm -hmm. He came out of the womb talking to everybody. He was the yeah. inverse. Of, he, was, he was the inverse. He is, he is extrovert mm -hmm. extreme. Yeah. But what he does as well is he prepares his mind before he shares. Mm. And uh, we were going to pick him up from this youth program. He, and they said, you need to get the assignment that he worked on. Uh -huh. And the assignment asked him, do you believe in angels or something like that? Mm. And he wrote, my grandmother is an angel. Mm. And he put why. He sat on that. He processed that. He, so I think he's observing the world, mm -hmm. he's studying the world, and he's putting it on paper. Yeah. Which I didn't do at that age, but mm -hmm. he is writing down his thoughts. If he apologized, it's in written form. Mm -hmm. And he puts why. I wasn't writing mm -hmm. my thoughts before. I mean, you weren't apologizing, no. nonetheless. No. <laughs> writing it down, like, man. <laughs> Processing. <laughs> and, uh, wow, on a whole yeah. other level. But I really believe, sir, that uh, we emulate what we see. Yeah. Uh, we attract what we're around mm. and you know, I can honestly say everything that you spoke of as far as sitting on it and, and Making sure that I checked it not once but twice hearing it from different perspectives. That's you all day And, I appreciate uh, and it's I appreciate it's it is that and, and that's who you are at the core yeah. 
So knowing that that only adds value to any situation, any space, whether that's leadership, whether that's taking a side role, whatever the case may be, collaboration, yeah. uh, always bringing that best foot forward. I can always love and appreciate that about you. And, and I, I, I want to, so, so there's some people who go into the gym and they're studying and they're mm -hmm. dribbling and they're shooting a jump shot and they're trying to be, they're trying to get their six championship rings. Yeah. Some people are doing it for them. Mm -hmm. But when I go and I study and I spend time, I'm really trying to figure out how do I impact the world for yeah. others. That's at the core. The motivation is not to be mm -hmm. the best human being. Uh, speak in the, the room, most man. eloquent, right? It's literally mm -hmm. with the goal. So if you look at my library, the library is how you help people. Sure. It's not about mm -hmm. how I become, you know, the most dominant, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's really on how I help people. It's going to go right back to Ella. I'm a, it yeah. Literally, it's going to circle right back to Ella. I'm trying to be as purposeful in my leadership journey and as deliberate around the alignment of my whole life, mm -hmm. so that it, so that you don't see inconsistencies. Yeah. And I'm not talking about trying to hide something from you. I want to be as much in alignment right. at all parts of my life, right. so that I don't have to perform. Right. It's and so name. that's the right. that's that yes. that's what you see. I don't I don't want right. to have to come in a room and perform. Yeah, I don't need to nah. put on. That's who I yeah. am. That's actually right. Speaking of that, along those lines, thank you for sharing that. Um, what's a maybe a piece of wisdom or a value add that you have learned from Miles? Mm. Yeah, I I would say um, he has a thirst and a yearning for belonging mm. and I was more of like uh, you know growing up I, I was more of like I'm gonna score 60 points and yeah. you're going <laughs> you're gonna feel the 60 points right. <laughs> like I'm gonna score. Right. Miles will pass he has a LeBron mm. he will get 10 assists at the detriment of his point average and feel game. good about that yeah right. and he's yeah. gonna get that assist but he yeah. is so communal Mm. At his core and at an early age. That's right. I didn't have to isolate, I got silent. You're right. He was he's out, he's open. And to me, I just think King King once quoted, and I don't know if it's if it's his words or if it's, if it's a quote, that I can't be who I ought to be until you are who you ought to be. Mm. Miles is living that at this age. It's wonderful. He can't be who he ought to be until his friends are who they yeah, ought to be. Putting others first. Yeah, I didn't have wow. that. I didn't have that framework. Mm. I didn't have it. It was, it was, it was linear. Yeah. But I appreciate seeing that in him. Now, there's, there's, mm -hmm. there's a journey to that. Absolutely. All community is not a kind That's community. Absolutely. Right. All kinfolk ain't Yeah, yeah. So, there's, there's pain. Folk and folk, right? so there's pain. Yeah. There's absolutely. pain in, mm. in selflessness. Yeah, in, in, in living that life right. because it's not appreciated. Matter of fact, right. we have a culture oh, man. of, uh, of uh, not going that uh, direction. Self preservation. Oh my God. Oh man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. Taught, it's taught, it's taught yeah, history, yeah, science. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so for him to embody that type of energy, yeah. um, that, that speaks volume. Um, I'm curious, do you find yourself parenting the way that you were parented? Hmm. Um, I remember calling my mother, my father's no longer here, but I remember calling my mother. And what I realized is that she had a priority on the internal terms. Mm. And I had such a priority on the external miles. And one day she talked to me, she said, you know, inside that body, there's a soul. Mm. And you're responsible for that too. Like you, like you, like you were responsible for the whole package. Right. Um, so my father was like, he'd, he'd get us all lined up, and we would get a haircut on a, on mm -hmm. a Saturday, and then, then you go about your day, and then your hair would grow back until he felt like cutting. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I knew that there were some external things I had to do to take care of my son. Sure. But my mom, she reminded me, there's a there's an internal mm -hmm. being that you're responsible for too. <clears throat> And it's not always visible yeah. to you. And so you need to be aware that that whole being is left under yeah. your. And so I just, um, I, took, I had to learn that side of my, pa my parents' yeah. journey. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff, good stuff. 
Uh, um, I believe like there's timeless lessons. Like I always talk about my grandfather, man. He lived to be 101. Mm -hmm. He was 60 when I was born. Wow. Uh, so when you think about it, when he was 12, he was well into his 70s, mm -hmm. right? When you think yeah. about it from a, but there was there's some lessons that, man, as much as it hurt as a kid, I'm, I find myself still doing it to this mm -hmm. day. One of those things, sir, is if you're not early, you're late. Wow. Um, Time is a big deal. It shows a small piece of respect for yourself as well as those that you've invited to do whatever it is. Yeah. To say, I care about you and from the beginning, yeah. I want to let you know that because I'm here, I'm present. That's good. Uh, and I'm ready. That's you good. know, I'm That's prepared. Good. That's you know? good. Um, do you believe, or, or, or what are some of those timeless lessons for you like, when you think about yeah, the patriarchs, the patriarchs, man, watching your brothers, your mom, your dad, all of those things. What are some of those early life lessons that you found valuable um, that will forever be ingrained in you and you walk in daily? I will ha I'm going to highlight one. Um, I grew up in a very humble household, uh, humble beginnings. Um, but what was taught to me was that there is a role for mercy mm. in the roles that I see in my life. I was very critical of my father when he was alive. But when you hear his whole mm. story, you can only be merciful mm. to that story. He grew up, his parents were dealing with alcohol, and so he had to run away early from home. And he's, he's growing up himself. Mm -hmm. um, so when he gets boys, Mm -hmm. What am I expecting mm -hmm. from somebody who had to raise himself? And so you begin to realize how much mercy should play mm -hmm. in how you see other people rather than how much you actually give. And that difference, I had to, that's the lesson I take. Yeah. How much mercy should I, should I, am I giving and how much mercy should be deserved by yeah. default? And I don't think I've always operated in that lane mm. and there's some this there's, there's a lesson of mercy and i think in every relationship mm -hmm. and i don't think our culture allows for that to be a norm mm, that's good yeah grace and mercy mm. unmarried to yeah absolutely i i've i've heard and um i've been mentored in a space uh that Giving grace becomes important when you can first give it to yourself mm. and live in a space of grace. It also allows you to to give it to others. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Uh, so yeah, that's that good old wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I'm I'm curious with, with and along those same lines. Do you believe that we really can connect those dots? Like I I know as an educator, as a community leader, as someone that's passionate about people. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, and wanting to see the best come from people, do you believe that old wisdom that you're talking about, that, uh, that wise uh, knowledge you know, of the past generations can be curated and added to the innovations of the current generation? If so, you know, from your vantage point, you know, how do we begin to fill those gaps? That's a, that's a good question. Um, yes. Um, I think it can be applied. And I think people are doing some cool things. Yeah. So there's a guy named um, uh, Cody Charlin. Mm. He's a former pastor. Mm -hmm. um, and he's created his, I call, I call it sanctuary. He don't use this term. I call it yeah. sanctuary. And it's called fun nights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, F up nights. Yeah. Yeah. Call we call it fun nights. But in that, in that room, you give your mm -hmm. failure. Mm -hmm. He don't give you permission to talk about reconciliation mm -hmm. or resiliency. I mean, tell where you have failed right. and the community embraces you back. Mm -hmm. The community asks you questions. Mm -hmm. How do we normalize the journey yes. and not just embrace you when you complete it? Because mm -hmm. in that journey, there's failure, 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 That's failure. Right. And That's I right. just appreciate how um, he has created a secular space mm -hmm. that applies that old wisdom without ever being in a church. Yeah. And you get people in there crying, you get people in there telling mm -hmm. their most deepest stories. Um, I told my story of how my father wanted me to be 
this this academic that didn't use his hands. Mm -hmm. And the moment I got that degree, he died. Mm -hmm. And then I lost all my jobs. <laughs> mm -hmm. So like there was a failure there. Right. I, th I thought I reached the Mount Rushmore. Right. There was a failure. And the community just started sharing their story. Yep. I was like, man, I went through that, man. I went. We don't have moments like that. You got to be mm -hmm. on. You got to operate mm -hmm. in our social space. Yes. You got to operate in perfection. Mm -hmm. Nothing's ever wrong. Right. That's absolutely Even if right. you're telling a mental health testimony, hey, I'm going to tell you about my mental health. If you don't tell that well, right. people will people yeah, they're gonna judge you. Right. No. <laughs> yes, absolutely yeah. right. So I, he created a space that's modern, mm. sleek. It's like a TED Talk. Yeah. yeah. Nice and sweet. You don't get to make yourself feel strong. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and you feel strong because the community takes you that. I love it. Shout out to Cody. We actually uh, went to the Rialto Mm. Uh, for the one they did there yeah. and uh, saw several speakers. Not only were we there, we had the privilege of filming it. Wow. And did wow. a recap video, and you're absolutely right. The wow. impact of being vulnerable and transparent in spaces of uncomfortability when it comes to quote-unquote failures, mm. things That's that so you That's found so to be a lesson uh, and in this moment called it a loss. Yes. Um, so, yeah, man, I think there's so much strength in that. Discover the pinnacle of visual storytelling experiences with Broco TV Productions. From the artistry of photography to the magic of videography, the world of podcast production, exclusive red carpet services, captivating MC services, inspiring speaking engagements, expert panel discussion curation, and breathtaking drone services. The bros have you covered. Elevate your events and storytelling with us. Contact Broco TV Productions now at 919-714-9905 and be a part of our incredible journey at www.brocodetvproductions.com We're here to make any room better. Well, welcome back. Welcome back to the Broco Show. Thank you. Uh, you're you're no, no stranger to yeah. our, uh, our humble platform. Uh, I'm going to kick this thing off. <laughs> Right from the top of what I see on the top of your head. <laughs> uh, the NC State yeah. Final Four men's and women's. Yes. It, 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 this is an amazing season that they yes. yes. Kevin Keats saved his job, his yes. legacy. What was the campus like? You know, you're, you're a professor. Tell, tell us about just the feel on campus. Yes. Yeah, For well, one, I, you know, um, Every university I've been a part of, I literally, literally lived in schools. Like, I, I went all the way through my PhD, I went straight through. Mm -hmm. I've never been a part of a university where the team, the winning culture, dominated the city. Mm -hmm. This was my first time, even as a human being, experiencing sort of this sort of euphoria around sort of winning and, and, and championships. So it was, a, it was pretty exciting to see. But the last time this occurred was 1983. Oh, yeah. It's been a while. And 1983, I'm, I'm one. Okay, <laughs> I'm one, mm -hmm. but being able to see a team take over the city was, was jaw dropping. Also, always living in that Cinderella story mm -hmm. was awesome. But to be honest with you, when I first wanted to get tickets to a sports team, my mentor that had guided me as an academic professor at NC State said, go get the women's ticket. So when they got women's basketball season ticket, yeah. these ladies have been on a roll. I mean, women, women. So not only to have the men have that Cinderella story, but also have the women sort of run and do their thing that they've been doing every year. Mm -hmm. But for me, um, it just took over the university. You, you start to see people come together at night to watch the game, yeah. the bell towers turn red, the mayor apex saluting. You know, yeah. and you really start to see red everywhere. But I was in the, this This sums up the whole thing. I was in uh, like a CVS, I was in line, the person in front of me was a long, long, a long NC State man. Mm -hmm. And he was being honest. He said, I'm frustrated because they have all these bandwagon people who are coming to be a part of what I've been a part of the whole time. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, man, um, there's moments where life will allow for you to appreciate what's already been there. And I think that's what, what it was. I don't think nobody was anti NC State. I just think they began to appreciate what was here the whole time. Yeah. And so I just appreciate the coach. I appreciate Burns. I appreciate the whole team, the women's team. 
with just being consistent throughout the last three to four years in terms of winning. But no, it was amazing. It, it, it was something that the city rallied around. Mm -hmm. And I, I forgot what the slogan was. The slogan was like, why not us? Yes, why not us? So I mean, even as Raleigh is growing, and even as we are trying to compete with other metro centers, mm -hmm. our, that slogan works. <laughs> why not us? When you're thinking about moving your headquarters somewhere, why not us? When you're thinking about selecting a university for your kids to go to, mm -hmm. Why not? That's right. And it literally just took over the whole city. Yeah. Uh, I'll be honest, when they, they were going to the ACC tournament, I couldn't stay up those games. <laughs> uh, and so the first couple of them, I, I missed entirely. Yeah. I, I'm looking back, and like, okay, they're still going? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, yeah. let me let's try this same thing. So I feel like I was the reason they won the ACC tournament <laughs> because I, I didn't watch the first half of any game. And by the time they started winning, yeah. that I did that purposely. I think, okay, they've been winning with me not watching the first half and me possibly not even seeing the end of the game. <laughs> and so I purposely did not see any of the first half uh, until possibly the ACC championship yeah. game. That one, I was like, okay, I, I'm going to watch a little bit. I'm going to miss the first seven yeah. minutes. And I, I carried that on to the, the uh the, uh, the Final Four run doing the exact same thing yes, yes. until it all kind of exploded. But uh, but yeah, it, it was a magical time. I, yeah. I heard about you know getting down there on the bell tower and watching oh, the play. I mean, I had, I had one student, one athlete. Uh, he wrote me an email and he was like, uh, "Hello, professor, can I get an extension mm -hmm. on my assignment? We're going to the Final Four. I was like, uh, "Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can get an extension." But no, it, it's. It's definitely something that um, you have to experience and witness as a, as a member of the university, yeah. as an alumni, yeah. as somebody that's living in the city. It was magical. It was, it was magical. Well, go pack. <laughs> uh, I, I do want to shift gears just a little bit from basketball to your political aspirations. Yeah. You know, two years ago, you were running for the office for Mayor of Raleigh, and you're putting your, your name in the ring one more time. Why again? Why, why not you? Ah, that's a really good, really good question. Well, I often, um, I often lead with a framework. Um, I believe democracy at its purest form, in terms of being able to represent people who directly vote for you, can be preserved at the local level, at the mayoral level, at the council level. It's at that level that you can go to the grocery store and see your mayor and your council member. To me, I think there's something special about that role at this point in American history. Mm -hmm. I think there's something special about that role. But also, last time I ran, our city was struggling with community engagement. I mean, it was, it was literally an issue that was, it, it's not a sexy issue mm -hmm. because it's, it's hard. You gotta hear stories, you gotta hear concerns, you gotta hear frustration, yeah. um, along with celebration. Usually people opt not to do that. Mm -hmm. But community engagement was a Achilles heel. It remains a Achilles heel. But the, the, the shift now for our city is that now we're seeing insecurities rise. Mm -hmm. We're seeing housing insecurity rise in our city. We're seeing food insecurity rise in our city. We're seeing economic insecurity rise. They just had a stat to come out and say $102,000 you need as a single person to live in Mara. So you're talking about um, affordable housing is for fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Eighty, we need to add eighty in there. Mm -hmm. um, so the condition that I was advocating for before literally reached a level of urgency. So this election has become significant and important, not just for Terrence, but for people who are trying to live and survive in our city. Um, I think we're leaving some options on the table that I've advocated for in the last campaign um, that we need now in terms of, we really just need to secure one. We need to get it to where every resident can feel secure, no matter how much money you make, no matter where you are around the city. We're not just talking about South East Raleigh, we're talking about all of Raleigh. Residents need to feel secure um, about their home, about their jobs, about their economic conditions, about their food, and right now, um, we're, 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 on, we're in a tough condition. Mm -hmm. I was at an event hosted by Nate McMillan last week uh, where that topic came up quite often. Uh, they also talked at length in regards to having environments and social programs for the youth. Yeah. Um, you have a, a young black yes, right. boy yes, yourself. Right. Um, I'm curious, 
how your energy and or platforms are going to shift the focus onto programs for our youth, uh, the wonderful things that happen in the city and the community centers around town, and making sure that this is a spot that's working for them. Yeah, I, it, it's unfortunate, but we still have zip codes where if you're born there, your, your lifetime annual salary will not pass twenty five, thirty, fifty thousand mm dollars -hmm. We still have that, and the city is growing the way it's growing. Your annual salary when you become an adult, because you're born in a certain zip code, would not go past fifty thousand dollars. We still have that here. Also, we we just exited a, a disparity study. Disparity studies tell you how well you are serving black and brown, small women owned businesses as vendors as a city. And we failed that 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 study. We have yet to have a healthy pipeline the young kids, especially young kids of color, to be served and to serve and to be funded and, 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 and supported well by the city. We just have not met that threshold. And so right now we're seeing where, if you look at the vendors who are served by the city, you're not gonna see somebody who was born and raised in uh, Southeast Raleigh. Um, if you look at the vendor list, you're not gonna see a diverse population um, that would live the born of, uh, supported by, by um, probably the tech company that's moving here. You're not seeing a um, youth pipeline to those jobs that are, will allow them to afford to be here. So there's so many things left on the table that we're not even touching at all that these kids are begging for. But that's just economic opportunity. If you think about the build space, if a kid was to come downtown, if you delete marble, what is for them? That's a good point. If you don't, if you take marbles away, what downtown is designed for that young kid? I didn't think of it that. But again, we need to start designing for those places. If not, then we leave it up to responding to later crisis, later safety measures later school intervention that we don't design for kids to be healthy, thriving right now. And we're reacting right now. We're very reactive um, in terms of youth and youth-led spaces. And I think we have an opportunity to be more aggressive. We have an opportunity to engage kids more. But also, we are surrounded by tech companies. Tech companies live by design space, or design thinking. Design thinking says everybody can come and create an idea. Why don't we leverage the young ideas that are in our city? We, we have some of the top schools in the country. Sorry? Not North Carolina. We have some of the top schools in the country. How do we leverage those minds to engage them now and to keep them here? District C is a company that goes around and they do design thinking for municipalities. Mm -hmm. I would love to see them have a larger presence in our city and our municipality so that we can provide purpose and guidance for the kids who want to stay in this space. Thank you for that. Um, we had a chance to talk to the mayor of Durham, uh, Leah Williams. He's a, another regular guest on our show who, who's now doing his big, Mr. Yeah. Big Celebrity, I'm not on <laughs> President Biden, on our Air Force One. Are you prepared yourself for the celebrity aspect of what mm. the mayorship will, will be? You know, you'd be a mayor of the, a city that's one of the largest cities in North Carolina, a county that's the largest county in North Carolina, yeah. if not one of the largest counties in all of the U.S. How are you preparing yourself for what that's going to feel like, stepping into the um, One, there's a, there's a technical side in terms of how do you begin to have your mind grapple with the technical policy or leadership framework needed to run a city. And again, this is a weak mayor structure. So it's almost like I'm the board chair of a board versus like New York. Most people just go to New York, so I like to make that clarification. So I'm the board chair of a board. Um, but the technical side, my PhD literally trained me around governance. The tools of governance, what does it mean to govern? There's a technical side that I'm completely confident to roll into that, that space. But then there's another side, and that's why I lean on other examples like uh, Senator Booker. Senator Booker, when he was mayor, his home was in the projects. 
you would have to go to the projects upstairs to go visit the mayor's house. Think about how radical that would be for this. <laughs> I didn't know that. And I lived outside of Newark at that yeah. time. He lived as mayor in the project. So some people go, oh, I'm, I'm here for the people. I represent the people. I'm the, I'm the mayor of the people. He actually was. Like he actually went home to that neighborhood to whatever community conditions, mm -hmm. either it be drugs, guns, whatever it may be, or just beautiful community, whatever that condition was or is. That's where the mayor would hold. I want to be a mayor that doesn't embrace celebrity that takes me home a different way. I want home to be there. I don't want people to have to imagine or discover and attribute who the mayor is or should be. I want people to be familiar, confident, even imagine themselves in that role. To me, I think that should be what embodies a mayor is effective and of the community and for the community. And so things didn't go the way we would have anticipated last time. Now, what were some of your biggest takeaways that you took from the previous campaign that you're going to use to get elected this time? Yeah, and so, so we they shifted our election to be on the same election as the presidential uh, year, okay, so presidential election, mm -hmm. which means that you have a very saturated ballot. Ours was two pages, and we were at the end of the two pages. So, so, so you think about this. Our democracy has made it to where you have to almost take a final exam to know all the issues for those who represent you. And so for me, I realized that there's a, there's a cognitive capacity for voters to have to learn every issue at every level, all on a large ballot, so there's benefits to being on the presidential election yeah. because People everybody show up. goes out and show up. Yeah. The negative side is it's, it's a lot. You start just asking people who do I vote for and why. And so it's a lot to take in. So to me, I realized that there was a capacity issue. We were, we were inundating voters and not allowing them to actually see what actually represents me in this human being. And to me, I think we need to make sure we revisit that. So what I've learned is that People need to have some guidance on what the role of mayor is and was and should be. And they should understand that in, the, in, a, in a framework. I use the Ella Baker framework. So I started a podcast called Illogical by Truth. Yeah. That was birthed from my lessons learned. Most people didn't know what a mayor meant. Matter of fact, most people assume that all change came from the president. <laughs> also, People who are um, have rich civil rights, black and brown history, they didn't realize how much local leaders, local governance, local government played in their um, success as civil rights leaders. So the desegregation of schools, that was school board. That's local. That's 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 right here. The citizens, that's local. That's the that's the negotiation with your commissioners and your, and your mayor. You're talking about local battles. The reason why the president was called is because there was violence. Outside of that, there were local issues. And if you look at the black history, the black story, it has a tremendous resume on local, local government. Tremendous, exemplary. I don't know what other word to use. <laughs> it's a very impressive local history. So for me, um, I just had to remind them of the truth, remind them of the story, remind them of you were marching to go to the office of the mayor. You are marching to go to the office of the school board. Like you were, like these were local issues that ended up having national fame. Mm -hmm. And I think we didn't even remind you that some of these issues that we're seeing now, banning books, what you can and can't teach, DEI language phase, phasing away. Some of these things, again, will remind you of how important local government is. Oh, yeah. When you are seeing your whole story disappear and a new side of the city is forming, that's a local issue. <laughs> that's a local issue. For me, my job is in my home is just to remind people of the truth of the local local history. So people are going to see this right when they're thinking about uh, which person to yep. cast their name for. What are some of the things that you want our audience to know about your platform? Yeah, so my platform is birthed out of actual need. So for me, what I've heard the most 
there's some issues that have been problems. You had affordable housing, you had um, just cost burden, you had uh, remote work. There's some issues that have risen up. But the one issue, my top priority, is security. I want to secure Raleigh. That's my number one issue. I didn't say safety, I said security. It's, it's a response to housing and security. How do we secure more housing? Food and security. If you go and look at people who are serving our unhoused or our most vulnerable population, they said their numbers are jumping out the roof right here in this city. You're seeing downtown numbers, foot traffic decline, but you're seeing unhoused and hunger increase. You're seeing small businesses don't feel secure economically, so they gotta shut down. We had some big Capital City Club 16 closed. You had, I mean, you're, you're having major, Wells Fargo's leaving. You have a major companies leave our downtown. You have a major restaurants closed down. They're not feeling secure financially. So they have to make a different decision. So my number one priority, and it sits across so many insecurities, is I want to make sure Raleigh is secure. I want to secure Raleigh. Well, I wish you the best of luck. I wish I lived in Raleigh, where I could vote for you. Right? Moved out, supported my man. Uh, Mr. Mr. Williams, but uh, I, I think it's going to happen this time, and I'm excited to see it. Thank you so much. And so, until next time, this is Bruce Smith signing off from the Bill Coach Show. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Appreciate it. Discover the pinnacle of visual storytelling experiences with Broco TV Productions. From the artistry of photography to the magic of videography, the world of podcast production, exclusive red carpet services captivating MC services, inspiring speaking engagements, expert panel discussion curation, and breathtaking drone services. The bros have you covered. Elevate your events and storytelling with us. Contact Broco TV Productions now at 919-714-9905 and be a part of our incredible journey at www.brocotvproductions.com. We're here to make any room better. Dr. Ruth, what's going on, sir? How you doing? How you I'm doing? I'm doing well, man. I hope you are, man. I'm curious. What's your code? What are the standards that you live by, the words, the values that you hold that you stand on business? Yeah, so uh, most people will lean into this whole dominant, all-powerful, power-consuming leadership model. I have, I have a very simple uh, three. Live humbly love mercy, and do justice. To me, those are my three. That's the quote I live by. Do justice, love mercy, walk, love mercy, walk humbly. I think if you do those three well, you're operating excellent leadership. Community Spotlight produced by Broco TV mm. Productions. Tell the people your experience. Number one, it was just, it was amazing. Again, this group has they lasted the test of time. I remember 2020, my first time on the show as an appearance, um, and to see this, the growth, the maturity, the strength, the audience. Um, no one captures this audience like the Broco. So just always glad to be here. Always glad to really support and have them support me. Um, real community. This show is a real community.